Um, can you talk a little bit about the role of non-invasive diagnostic testing, like electrocardiogram? Right. Electrocardiogram? right. You know, this is the question, and everything has to do with, you know, cost effectiveness in, in the country. In Italy, by the way, every single school-aged athlete has an electrocardiogram as a baseline in Italy. Um, and they have pretty much wiped out sudden cardiac death from a number of causes, such as hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which is um, you can screen with an electrocardiogram, um, Wolf Parkinson-White syndrome, um, what we call the prolonged QT syndrome. And there are some other rarer things that are picked up on an electrocardiogram. When we first started doing this at our hospital 20 years ago, there was a lot of criticism um, about the fact that maybe this was not cost effective. And I think we've shown that in terms of not that, you know, you have to do 10,000 or more electrocardiograms until you find somebody. But the truth of the matter is it's a reassurance to the, to the families, to the um, schools, the coaches, and to the primary care physicians. So there are some primary care physicians who actually do cardiograms in their office, and we will read them for them. Or they may refer uh, the teenager to um, our facility for electrocardiograms. So I think if there's any... A test that is certainly a good screen, it would be an electrocardiogram. Um, it's inexpensive to do. Uh, the mach you can buy electrocardiogram machines now for about $1,000. You can have them in the school. You teach the nurses. I personally think it, it's a good thing, and it's, it is very reassuring. It's not so much to find that one child who may have something, but to reassure the 99.9% .9 that their, their kids are going uh, into a situation where at least as far as we can tell, they don't have those diseases. The, the next step after that, which we're now doing, um, at least in Staten Island, um, at some of the high schools you're probably aware of, is um, doing echocardiograms. Echocardiograms are better for things like Marfan syndrome, um, a little more specific for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And the other thing which we didn't mention, Mike, is uh, coronary artery anomalies. There are some rare coronary artery anomalies that do occur in healthy individuals. We're not talking about coronary artery disease for high cholesterol, but anomalies of the coronary artery that can be picked up by echo. Uh, Pete Maravich was a very famous basketball player who actually at 40 died of one of these rare anomalies. So we can see the proximal, the beginnings of the coronary arteries on echo and, and rule that out, which again is maybe 1 or 2% of the individual, actually a little higher, probably closer to 5 to 10% that will die suddenly um, of a cardiac cause. So the echo, however, is... is it's more um, uh, expensive to do. You need technicians who can, are, are certified to do it, and you need pediatric cardiologists who are experienced in reading it. So that becomes a whole different um, uh, issue in terms of, of, of screening. But certainly the electrocardiogram, I'm, I'm a very big proponent of.